welcome back to our channel. I'm Tessa and today I'm actually going to be doing something a little different than I normally do. Excuse my angle but my tripod right now is the steering wheel. I'm literally sitting in my car getting ready. So it's kind of a get ready with me video slash story time. I'm going to the dentist today <laughs> and so I dropped my kids off for school really early in the morning. Literally we leave home at anywhere between 6.15 and 6.30. You know, I gotta give that time. I have two kids um, to take to school in the morning. I have four kids total, but two to take in the morning. My two are, other two are grown and out of the house. But my little ones are 15 and 12. So I still drive my 15 year old to high school at um, like miles and miles away. And, and then I drop off my youngest right after. So he goes to school at seven, gets to school, supposed to be 720. And then um, my little one goes to school for 755. So I literally sit in Walmart parking lot because the schools are just like not too far from each other. So this is the midway point for me. And so I will wait here until it's time for my daughter to go to school and then I'll drop her off and then go about my day. But today I had a, a dentist appointment. I have a dentist appointment. And so um, I didn't have enough time to get ready at home. Did all the, <clears throat> the other stuff, excuse my voice. I, I feel like I'm getting sick, but I was screaming also. So <laughs> could be from that, I'm a screamer. But anyway, um, and I did not get, have time to get ready. So while I'm telling my story, I will be getting ready. Um, but don't judge me on my makeup skills because I really don't have any. <laughs> don't, don't hit me up talking about, oh, you did this wrong. And I'm not doing my eyebrows for a reason. Okay, I'm trying to grow them back in so that I can get them done. Okay, thank you. And if you have any giggling on the side, that's my son. He's late for school. And he's over there watching another YouTube video that's not ours. Just saying. And over there chuckling at whatever the heck he's watching. So if you accidentally see me poke anyone over there, it's it's him. I'm going to tell a story about um, when I was younger. It's kind of a family story. So when I was younger, um, I was actually a very wild child. Um, my mom... She didn't have like a terrible time with me, but I kind of, I was all over the place. Like all I wanted to do is get outside, have fun with my friends and just play. Like I just, like, like most kids, but my sister was, Gail was totally different. She just wanted to play with a few other the girls down the block. They liked to make up dances and all of that stuff. And I just was not into it. All I wanted to do was play in the mud, play basketball and just live my life with my friends and we used to get dirty like dirty play in mud play thundercats play gi joes you know it was so much fun growing up thundercats was like my favorite really <laughs> it was my favorite but anyway um we had a blast we had a blast and i just had a thing where i did not want to let everyone know where i was going it just was my thing. I just was like, I. it wasn't like I did it on purpose. I honestly just forgot half the time because I got so excited. I forgot half the time and ran out of the house. I'm going to use some of these fall colors. Aren't these pretty? Don't mind my dusty um, thing. <sighs> so anyway, my mom was so sick of that. My grandmother, God rest her soul, she was, she she hated that about me. I would like run out the house and be like, I'm leaving. I, I, I wouldn't even say I'm leaving half the time. Just gone. That was it. Did you see all the glitter? <laughs> gone. Didn't care. And Gail would be like, you didn't lock the door. I'm like, okay. Half the time. That's how it went. Like I just didn't say anything. I would just go. This one time, I don't remember what my mom was preparing for. But my mom used to cater. She used to do a lot, she used to have a lot of orders for food or even sometimes it wasn't even like paid things. She would just do things for people because she's kind. And um, so my mom was preparing for something. I don't know what she was preparing for, but she was in the kitchen cutting up a whole bunch of like vegetables or seasonings or something. And, and 
I wanted to leave, so I didn't tell my mom or anyone that I was leaving. And it was my mom, my sister, and my grandmother in the house. And I decided, hey, I'm going to take off because I'm ready. That's what I do. <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> I took off, went out the front door. I can't remember why, what happened. For some reason, I'm remembering like a kitten. I don't know, it was something with a cat. And then I went across the street to my friend's house and that's all I personally remember. Coming back home, seeing my mom on the porch, then seeing somebody running. It was like chaos and I just was, I didn't understand what was happening. So this is what I heard that had happened. <laughs> my bad. So what happened is when I left, for a few minutes, it wasn't even that long, I went out the front door, left the doors open, not wide open, but apparently some guy came up the steps and came into the house. Went upstairs into my mom's room, went straight up the stairs, because our door is right here. You walk straight in, you walk straight up the, the stairs. Walked straight upstairs and went into my mother's room and was trying to rob the house. No one knew he was up there. I didn't know. My sister didn't know. And then my sister comes downstairs to ask my mom, I think, for money. I don't remember, but I think that's what it was or something. And so my mom sends my sister upstairs into her bedroom to go get it from the closet. So when my sister goes upstairs into the closet, there goes this guy in the closet going through the stuff. And she freaks out and runs back downstairs to my mom and back into the kitchen. And I think she had, she was, I think she was like eating cereal or something and she kind of spilled her cereal and ran and ran down the stairs and he chased her I think down the stairs and he chased her I think down the stairs and um, ran into the kitchen and my mom was in the kitchen cutting up stuff so my mom had a huge knife sister ran into the, the kitchen and um, this guy was like I don't know what really transpired like I don't know the conversation that happened she would have to probably tell the story but um I know that my mom asked him what he was doing in the house. Like, I don't think he ran. I think he, like, walked out the front door and it was on the porch and they were having a conversation. Weird. And because when I came up and was coming back in the house, I literally passed the guy. So anyway, um, my mom, the guy was literally, they were having a conversation because my mom literally was trying to find out what are you doing in the house? Because she was just confused at that point. And then he's trying to explain himself, but at the same time, you know, there's no explanation. So he's there trying to lie his way out of it. And none of it was adding up to my mom. And I think that she noticed like his pockets were full or something. I don't know, but I know that she knew he was lying. And my sister was basically saying, oh, he was in the closet, you know, and it was crazy. And so I was confused and walking in my friends were out there and i'm walking in passing this dude that just robbed my house had no idea he was in there and took stuff so um all of a sudden the guy takes off running and it's just chaos my mom's running him down having an asthma attack and um running and i've never seen my mom run and she literally ran him down and at the corner of most of the blocks in New York because we're from Brooklyn New York there are those huge fire alarms so she pulled it as soon as she got to the corner and our fire department is literally two blocks down so she's still running him down screaming telling everybody stop and he robbed our house and then the fire trucks came and caught him they both made like a, a V and caught the guy so my mom had to go to court and testify against him blah 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 and then we find out from the cops that this guy had stole money I think jewelry or something like that and they found a scalpel in his pocket to me robbing the house is one thing but the next thing is that you chased my sister down the stairs and you had a scalpel in your pocket but what stopped you was the fact that you got into the kitchen and my mom's stand there with a knife anybody that has children any mother knows that if you 
find your child is in harm, there's no stopping. So that guy must have known. There goes this crazy angry black lady in the kitchen with a knife and you just chased her daughter down the stairs. You have a scalpel in your pocket. I don't know if you guys know what a scalpel is, but scalpel. And he tried it by walking in this kitchen with a scalpel to come after my sister. And not that he took it out of his pocket, but just the fact that he had it was scary enough. Obviously he got arrested. Obviously he did some time. And um, I think they had to notify my mom when he was being released. I think they did, I can't remember. I was young, but my hand is hella shaky. Hey. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so they had to notify her when he was being released. And it was just scary. Just the thought about, like, we just was scared. I just remember being scared of the whole situation. Like, oh, my God. And, like, I don't remember it well, but that's what I remember from it. Um, if I'm wrong, Mom, correct me. Yeah, so that's, that's what happened. That's the time that we got robbed. And it was all my fault. Cause, so, yeah. I was the culprit that let the criminal in the house and almost killed off my entire family. And um, that wasn't cool. So parents, teach your kids to not do that. And kids, if you're watching, don't do that. Not a good idea. Do not try this at home. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. So let me tell you this interesting story that um, I experienced with Tessa as we were growing up, uh, my mom part of it too but there was this one time when Tessa decided to go out and hang out with her friends I guess one of the neighbors um, she left the door unlocked so I'm there hanging out with my mom she's in the kitchen we're talking for a little bit I decide to run upstairs mind you we have um we had pets we had a dog and a couple of cats so ran upstairs and I went to get something for my mom in her closet I was going to her closet actually I hear this rustling and I don't know at first I was like yeah maybe the cat's getting into some mess but my gut instinct was like yeah that sounds like a little bit more than rustling so I ended up running downstairs because it freaked me out I don't know I guess maybe just intuition so I ran downstairs and by the time, so by the time I get downstairs there's this guy behind me and he resembled my cousin so my mom was like, oh, Neil, how'd you get in the house? When did you get here? You know, like it was just so surprising to her. But as she looked at his face care carefully, you know, um, she realized it wasn't him. And he just goes bolting out the door. And my mom goes running behind him, chasing him down the block. Um, eventually, a fire truck ended up stopping them. And he got arrested. But... When he got arrested, they found a knife on him. And I just thought the whole experience was pretty scary. But yeah, it freaked me out. And I don't know, just one of those <laughs> stories that stick with me for a long time. So, yeah. Okay guys, so I'm at my mom's house and um, I'm going to actually have her tell her side of the story now. So introducing you, my mom. So here's my mom, guys. Say hi, mom. Hi, okay, everyone. So. <laughs> so, mom, you have to tell us your experience of what happened back in the day when I was young and irresponsible and I used to leave your doors open. Tell us the story your way. Oh, yes. It's frightening. I hope I don't choke up. But I could remember it was a Saturday trying to um, do a, a meals for someone who was visiting from... Um, Trinidad. Um, my two children were outside and while I was, you know, cleaning the chicken, <clears throat> I heard a creaking sound coming from the front door. Didn't pay it any mind because I knew they were outside and probably going back and, front, uh, back and forth. But before then I had called in one of them, which is Gail, and said, go upstairs, get me some money because I wanted them to go to the store. I heard a loud noise, a rumbling coming down the steps. The stairway actually very long. And all of a sudden, I saw a guy in front of me that looked like their cousin. Um, the same green eyes, the same coloring, but there was something different. So I got a little startled and I said, what are you doing here? 
oh, I'm looking for Dr. Chen. I said, suddenly I got a little calm. I said, Dr. Chen, oh, you got the wrong house. Let me show you. Let me take you outside to the next door. I guess he was fumbling in his pocket, and I guess he got scared, and he wanted to leave. So I escorted him to the door. Then I saw one. Uh, I saw Gail and Tessa come over and said, call 911, call the police. And he took off, and I took off behind him. And I got to the corner. I saw a, a, maybe about four or five black men in the car, and I was screaming and explaining what was happening to me. And they just laughed at me and went... Two seconds after that, I saw like the fire truck and I screamed and I told them and they took off. They said, which direction? And they ran. I was starting to get an asthma attack, but I was still running. And, you know, they caught up with him and made him take out every single thing that he had in his pocket. To my amazement, amazement a scalpel was in there. And I said, thank you, God, he didn't really get to take it out of his pocket while he was in the kitchen. Um... And I broke down, and my neighbors came, hugged me, kissed me, and they took him away. The police came by and said, you know, ma'am, it's better if you come to the, the station, um, with the precinct, we say station in Guyana, the precinct, and um, because it would be a better case for us. And you'll be, a, I said, well, I have company coming. Oh, you'll be away soon. Imagine I left my home around maybe one thirty two. I did not. I did not get back home until about maybe 3, 3.15. Just imagine the cops, when we were finished in the, in the precinct, the cops said, ma'am, you can go home. I said, how am I going home? I don't have any means of getting home. You took me from my home. And we had a little, you know, altercation. And I said, listen to me, you took me from my home. You're going to take me back fr fr um, to my, where I live, to my home. And so after, you know, a while, they did that. And I said, thank God. But I, I want to say, that the cops were only interested in getting their story right. They didn't care about me. It's about them. And we all have to stand up at all times for our rights. That's it. Thank God I'm here to talk about it. Lesson learned. Parents with young kids, always be vigilant. Know your surroundings. And always teach them to keep the doors locked, regardless of the neighborhood you lived in, because I live in a really good one, but that does not secure how things happen. Yes. I must say, I had two troublemakers. The biggest one is Tessa. Gail was really? much quieter. <laughs> <laughs> really? And you know, it, it, to this day, I'm traumatized. I could remember almost everything to this day. That's why I live in Arizona. I'll do it in a nice community, gated, whatever. I lock every door, RV, side, everywhere. I do not keep the back doors and I'm always jumpy. My kids would tell you that. I, I, I should have gone and got a little help in my, from my brains because everything makes me jump. Everything. Well, well, can I just interject by saying that, well, this hasn't been just your only experience. You've had one on the job. Maybe oh you can gosh. speak about that one. Oh, this is so terrible, and I hope I really, really don't cry because I am not forgetting this. Never forget the night. As a registered nurse and a visiting nurse, I chose to go into the black community, horrible community at that time because I wanted to help, and I, I realized they were not getting the service needed, and I was committed. Uh, everything went well except for one day I made a late visit, got on the elevator with my pulley, that's the bag, the nursing bag with equipment, and I got him with a few people, and this young guy, maybe around 20 or 30, he braced me, and um, I smelled alcohol. My client was on the sixth floor, but because I got so upset, I came up at the sixth, rang the doorbell, no one answered, and he pulled my bag, pulled out a knife that was about seven inches long. I will never forget, it was a green knife, a big blade. God is good, really good. I do not understand to this day how I was able to speak so softly and to let him know that I was doing good in the community and why would he want to kill me? And somebody said to tell him, listen, you wouldn't get away with this if you kill me because I, someone is coming to meet me in a second. And he looked, he pulled my day planner, he took out my check I had just got paid that day. He took all my money and he started to like hold my hands to pull me down and close um, staircase. And I said to him, why are you doing this? All I'm doing is doing good for this community. You would never get away with this. 
And and I, you know, popped my head like I saw someone say, oh, oh, and I, I said that, he ran down the stairs and said, tell you, and I screamed, I just screamed like a dog. And I went to another apartment down the hallway and a nice older woman took me in. I screamed my brother off, I told her what happened. She says, always robbery in there. I, I didn't have an escort that day. I, I, however, um, I called the, the precinct and the cops told me to come down. I said I was unable to come for me and they did. I called my job and the first thing they said to me, did they get the computer? Not how you're doing. I said no. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of minutes uh, after they rang me back, are you coming to work tomorrow? And I did not answer to that. And I went to the precinct and, you know, did what I had to do and, and went home. Um, what I'm saying is they sent me flowers, of course, which didn't mean anything to me, is that I was one of the nurses that got the top uh, an Esprit Award, right? That's the highest award on the job. But you're just a, a, a goddamn number. You're not, you, 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 you're not, uh, you're not indispensable. They will replace you in a minute. Do the best on your job you can. I must say, I had the best support from my union. I could not have, <laughs> I get the chip for it, I don't know. It's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna give you a minute. Hold on. Okay. Because of this, I feel I must um, on the next blog to talk about the, how important unions are and, and has gotten me far in life. And if it weren't for the union, I would not be in this lovely position I'm here, better than my social security. This particular union, I'm gonna talk about. I will not disclose the name till the next time I speak to you. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm sorry about my turn, but. One should always go and get help, mental help, when things happen to them and not decide that I could do it on their own. Because to this day, it happened years ago. But I remember, it's very upsetting. Thank you. Okay, good job. So guys, there you have it. That was our mom. She was very emotional, but um, even though this was a story time, I guess there is kind of a lesson to be learned in every story. Um, get help if you really need it because some people go through very traumatic you know incidents in their life and develop like PTSD from it and everybody you know has gone through something some get help some feel they don't need it there's no shame in it and um, it's, it's emotional you know so that's my mom She's the sweetest lady ever, and I'm glad that you guys got to meet her. So that's the story, John. Three different versions, three different people. The stories were very similar, but at the same time, there's little pieces that are like, huh? What? 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 Did that happen? Ow! 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 <laughs> so, it was funny to me. I thought it was hilarious, and um, at the same time, like, it tugged at my heartstrings because it's my mom. Lots. And Gail, I'm sorry, I almost got you killed. Mommy, I'm sorry, I got us robbed. And um, she's in there cooking, so that's her favorite thing to do. When mommy's stressed, mommy cooks. So yeah, like I said, mommy's here cooking some yummy, yummy chicken. And um, that's what she does when she's stressed. Or just any day, any other day. It doesn't matter, she just cooks all the time. Anyway, so until next time, guys. Bye! Say bye, bye. mommy. <laughs> bye. No.